Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel. Welcome to building a custom strain gauge with electric paint. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how to use Bear Conductive's electric paint to make your own custom strain gauge. And what is a strain gauge? It's essentially a resistive sensor that measures the strain or weight on some type of piece of infrastructure. So for instance, you know, it could be on a metal beam on a bridge that's supporting the bridge and you wanna make sure that the the metal beam is not getting too much weight, you could hook up strain gauge to measure the strain that that beam gets over an average day or an average week, you know, so on and so forth. Let's get started. So what is Bayer Conductors electric paint? So this is something I've been excited to get my hands on. It's essentially what it says it is. It's a conductive paint, but it's important to note that unlike copper or aluminum, it's not a very low resistance conductor. You know, you can almost assume when you're working with copper that its resistance is almost zero. Here, this actually has a very noticeable amount of resistance, and you can see some of the, the resistance specs that I grabbed off the data sheet. But we're going to use this resistive property of the electric paint for our strain gauge concept. And if you go to their website, they have a lot of tutorials and examples where they use it for proximity or capacitive touch sensor, and that's what they're actually showing in this picture. They're, they're using the, the capacitive touch property to basically turn on and off a light. So far, I haven't seen anybody using this as a strain gauge, so I wanted to try it out myself. So what is a strain gauge? In case you're not aware of a strain gauge, it's essentially typically a metal it's typically made of metal, at least the ones I have seen. And the idea is they run the conductive path back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And you apply the gauge right where the, where the strain you want to measure is. And what happens is as, you know, whether it's a piece of wood or metal, as it gets strain on it, it stretches out the strain gauge, which increases the resistance. It's important to note, though, that the resistance changes aren't huge, so you have to have a pretty accurate measurement device with pretty high resolution to detect the changes. And I should also say too, strain gauges aren't cheap. If you ever bought one, they're, they're pretty expensive. So this is a good way to get a low cost custom strain gauge is using the electric paint. And once again, the electric paint has a measurable resistance, so we can paint it on anywhere and we can use you know, that, that resistance and the change in that resistance to use it as a strain gauge. And that's what we're gonna do. So let me show a quick video of sort of some example testing I did just to make sure the concept works. Okay, what you're looking at is a piece of wood on my workbench. And this right here in black is the electric paint. So I used a stencil to paint this on. And I did this sort of zigzag pattern because that's, that's the area, this is the area where I wanna measure the strain. So I wanna have a a large change in resistance and by putting a couple paths on here it makes a larger resistance change or delta that I can measure. So I use screws right at the end here to connect to the paint and I just essentially let me start the video you can see I have it connected here and then I have it connected to a six and a half digit DMM so you can see my connection and you can see the resistance is about 12.5 K right and so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to back up and I'm going to grab it with my hand and my knee and put a little strain in that area and we're going to see the resistance change. So you can see I'm about to press down. It jumps up to about 13K. Then I think I put a lot more pressure on it. I really lay into it. And you can see it jumped to about 15 or 16K. So with a lot of pressure, you can see a noticeable change. So about two to three kilo ohms. With just a little bit of pressure, we saw a change of about 500 ohms. So important to note, those aren't large changes. And so if we want to measure this with an ADC from a microcontroller, we're going to need pretty good resolution to kind of see those changes. And I'll, I'll show my setup for that in a bit. So that's about it, I think, right there. And one other thing to mention before we go away from this video is my concept here, what I was thinking of is I put it on a board because I can put it, then put it underneath, let's say a step or your floor. Let's say, for instance, I have a wooden porch. So I could also put it on like a board on my porch and I could use that to detect if someone's coming up my, my steps or if someone's at my door. And depending on what kind of accuracy you can get, you may even be able to tell who it is based on their weight, more strain. 
And what I like about this concept is there's a lot of sensors out there that you can use to do this, but this would be a hidden sensor because it would be on the bottom of the steps or the porch, so no one would be able to see it, so they don't know that they're being sensed, I guess is a way to say it. Okay, here is gonna be my circuit setup, and I'm gonna use an Arduino, which is an open source you know, microcontroller development board, and I'm gonna use the Arduino Zero. You could use any Arduino you want. I chose the Zero, though, because it has a 12-bit ADC, so a higher resolution ADC than, let's say, the Arduino Uno or the Arduino Nano. Here's where I'm gonna measure the ADC. Here's where I'm gonna make my measurements. So this paint mark is supposed to be my custom strain gauge, which you saw in the video. And then I'm gonna put a, a non-changing resistance. I'm gonna use just a resistor, and I used a 10K resistor in my setup. And what I'm gonna do is measure the voltage drop across that stationary or non-changing resistance. And I know as the voltage goes up, well, actually I'm saying it backwards. As the voltage goes down, that means the resistance of the strain gauge is increasing. So that means I'm seeing strain. So as the voltage goes up, it means the strain is going up. And what I did is I used the five volts, the Arduino Zero is a 3.3 volt device, but I used the five volts here. So with about 12.5K here and 10K here, you know, I'm gonna get you know, somewhere around three volts. And the reason I use that five volts is because I wanna use most of the, the full range of the ADC, which in this case is gonna be zero to 3.3 volts. Okay, with that said, let's look at another video of this in action. And so what I'm doing here is I just want to prove my concept is going to work. So I set up a simple sketch, which I'll show you and I'll have it on my blog if you want to copy it. But a simple sketch where I'm going to average some measurements together and look for a change. And I'm going to use, in this video you're about to see, I'm going to use the plotting, the serial plotter, to show that change. So let's take a look. Okay, so what you're looking at is my computer screen, and you can see that it looks like just like a bunch of noise. I'm plotting ADC measurements from the zero that's being measured across that 10K resistor with the idea that I'm looking for changes on the strain gauge. So right now, all you see is kind of noise. And so if you look down, there's my Arduino zero. Well, that's a little blurry, that picture. There's my Arduino zero, and on this board is where I have my 10 ohm resistor. And then as, you, as we back away, what you're gonna see is I have two boards across here and I have my piece of one by with my custom strain gauge. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step on that board and you can see the, the changes in strain. So I'm gonna turn it over. And once again, this is going with that concept that I'm thinking of, of a floorboard or a stair board measuring, detecting someone on it. So here we go, we're gonna look up here and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tap it with my foot four times and put some pressure on it. There's two, there's three, and there's four. I'm not putting my full weight on it. And what we're gonna see here is now all of a sudden, you know, the scale of the, of the plot changes because we had a big variance. And you can see those four pushes I did because what's happening is the voltage on there is dropping because the resistance is increasing. Okay, so we can definitely notice it right there. Now, once again, I didn't put my full weight on there. So here I'm gonna put my full weight, so I'm about 175 pounds on a good day. And then, bam, so I put my full weight there and you can see a pretty considerable drop there, stepping on it. Then, I'm gonna put both my feet on there and we would expect to see a huge change there, and we do. We do, we can see it drop down all the way here. So. Real easy to detect it with the Arduino Zero. Once again, I am using it at 12 bits. One thing I, I do want to point out though, and this will be one of my words of caution, is sometimes the resistance isn't always repeatable. So you can see the resistance is at a certain level here. I step on it, it doesn't quite recover right away to the actual starting resistance. You can see it's a little bit lower and it stays down now here. Now, if I were to play this out over time, the resistance would probably settle back at about 12.5K, but it is important to note that there is some drift there. Okay, here's the code, pretty simple here. I'm gonna start the serial monitor. I set the, the analog ADC resolution to 12 bits because by default they have it at 10 bits. Then I burn some readings and I do that because I know with some microcontrollers they say after you change an ADC setting, not use 
to not use the next reading. Then I just have a short delay. I declare an average object. So I should mention I'm using this average library to average 10 readings together. This library is not a built-in Arduino library, so you're going to need to uh, search to download it from GitHub. But that's what I use. I make 10 measurements. I then subtract this, this amount here from each measurement because I'm really only interested in the, in a, the small of amount of change that's occurring. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically subtracting most of the value off of it so I can detect those smaller changes easier. And then all I do is I get the mean and I print it out to the serial monitor. And as we saw with the serial plotter, because that's what I'm, I guess I'm really printing it out to, we can see those changes. And once again, my, my application in mind here is to, to use it as a hidden sensor for detecting movement on a floor or steps. So some things to just point out before I, I end, you know, I, I don't want someone to watch this and say, oh, this can be a perfect replacement for a strain gauge. And it, and it can be, it's a great way to make a low cost custom strain gauge. You can just paint it on anywhere. That's the great thing about the electric paint. But as I noted at the end of the last video, there's some accuracy and repeatability things you have to keep in mind. So a, a, you know, a real off the shelf strain gauge is gonna give you better accuracy, better repeatability, but this can definitely be used to notice tr a change of strain or weight on, on an object. And you can also use it to get an idea of how much. So it definitely varies. It's just you have to deal with the accuracy and the repeatability is not gonna be that of a real strain gauge. All right, that's it for building a custom strain gauge with electric paint. If you have any comments or questions to add, use the comments section below in the video. If you like what you saw here, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and go ahead and check out forcetronics.com. Thank you for watching.